All right, back in the shop. This thing uh, glued up overnight. It's looking pretty good. I just nipped it off with the uh, flush cut saw. Now we're gonna smooth her down a little, I guess. And see how that goes. The old trusty Stanley number four. Uh, before I forget, you'll see I put a clamp here and a clamp here very much on purpose. So I was using the flush cut saw in this way. And I didn't want to uh, follow through too hard and mark up any of the, the old finish over here any more than I have to. Like, didn't want to do that with the saw. There's also, a, I believe it's called a succession number or a registration little scrolled on number here. That museum staff put on this piece at some point and I don't want to mar that so I just put the the saw became sacrificial at that point uh, I would just put these clamps here so that that would stop me from getting into anything I shouldn't on the follow-through isn't going to be hyper precision because this the way this crack was glued back together this and this are no longer even on the same level um, so we're just gonna get her down here kind of kind of close just starting to get into the original here a bit come down this this side that's pretty good that's pretty good this I should have cut off probably. Now that that's flushed off nicely, the join looks really nice in here too. Like it's not gappy or anything. Pretty pleased with that. Sounds like a piece of solid component. So I'm just going to nip in here with the uh, coping saw. Just a wee bit. Just kind of take the overhang extra off of that. This would be a little bit of a chisel sort of carving exercise to uh, match that contour afterwards, but that keeps it safe and safe and sound for now. Pretty slick. Let me tell you, having stuff bolted down to this bench is nice. I'm going to work on my work holding stuff a little bit, but uh, having this this uh, girthy thickness underneath there is uh, it's what the ladies love, so I approve as well. So up here, let's see if I can point this out. It's going to be hard to see. So this joint is woggly. And I'm going to try to put this stool back together so that it's you know, solid. People are uh, performing and having a good time playing music on the, you know, on stage and such. They're going to be moving around. They need a solid piano stool. So we're going to do what we can to make it solid again. But this is woggly. This joint's loose. And of course the leg is just kind of loose down here too. Um, I'm going to start up here. Somebody at some point had put a screw, a finishing, or a nail, sorry, a finishing nail in here. And, uh, I just snuck in next to the head of it a little bit with the uh, the drill. Use the light on the drill here and show you right there. And then uh, that gave it gave the head of the, the nail enough room to just be massaged over a bit. And then we come in with the side biters and you get under the under the gland end of it there a little bit, and you can kind of slowly work that nail up out of the joint. I do keep coming back here trying to peel it away from the finish so I'm not scarring the 
finish up too bad. I'm gonna have to do some patchwork in the the finish, but should be should be covering that up too probably. But well, that's part of the patchwork, I guess. There, covered, covered. Uh, get in here on that nail head. And just kind of pick it out until it's free enough. Maybe you can get the needle schnoz on her. Like this. And there is one finish nail. Extracted. That's minimal, minimal damage. But look at that joint. <laughs> Not much holding that one, just a little wiggle waggle. And uh, I'll try to pull this apart without breaking the end of the leg off. Of course. So here you see my first, it's my first attempt at replicating. So I have a piece off the stool here. And uh, which way does this go? This goes this way. So I have a piece off the stool. This joint was bad in the stool too, so I had to had to pull that out and uh, clean it up for re-gluing later. But also, I, it gives me better access to one of these spindles, the original spindles. And uh, I found some of these oak. Uh, I guess they would be railing balusters or railing spindles or whatever at the Habitat Restore for like three bucks a piece. So I picked a couple of those up and I'm just turning a, I found a thick chunk of one and I'm working this shape into it here. And uh, you can see the original finish here. Some of this was kind of in a similar shape already, but you know, similar, similar theme, I guess. So I'm just trying to pare it down to where I need it. And I have a cheap set of calipers here that I keep sort of referencing off the original piece and then you know, going extra big so it can be sanded some and whatever. So this is a lot of fun. This is the first time I've ever tried to make something for real on a wood lathe. After doing a couple of practice pieces earlier, like last week. I've had this old wood lathe for decades probably. It belonged to my brother. It's kind of a cobbled together mess. Uh, him and my grandfather put it together. Uh, back in I think the 1990s uh, and he did a lot of wood turning just as a hobby then and uh, and it's been sitting around I've carried it from house to house a little bit over the, the years and so on and so forth but uh, I'm gonna get in here and, and uh, tune some of this up here and make a few shavings fly I have my reference piece still take a little notch out of that there and this needs to come down smaller as well so I'm just picking at it a little at a time I have other other bits of oak left so I can redo it if I need to but it'd be cool to do it in the first try anyway contact I'm wearing a chainsaw face guard I figure it's probably a good idea just in case enough basically it's gonna get a little bit of sanding and I just have to get the ends down sort of the tenon pieces down to pretty close to the right size <clears throat> so again we're turning to the calipers so I have this set a little, a little bit just a little bit bigger than the tenon so I'm gonna ease those down enough just to slip it over 
and uh, more turning. This is fun. I don't know if anybody's got a wood lathe at home to play with, but I, uh, I recommend giving it a whirl because it's kind of fun. <clears throat> All right, so we are doing some measuring here. So I have this leg with with no spindle, and I just took a you know use a nail or whatever. I just use a drill bit and I'm just bottoming it in the hole here. That's about this much. So we know that. I measured that. It's about 7 eighths of an inch. So I uh, put that measurement on here. That um, lines up good. And then we will be able to tell approximately how long this thing is supposed to be. So we're going to measure that out. There we go. That's a pretty good little uh, creation there. It goes this way. Blam. It kind of almost fits in there with the tape on. Without the tape, it'll drive in kind of stiffly. Uh, you can see I've stained this. This is a piece of oak. It's been stained with one layer of stain. I'm going to let it dry overnight and do another another layer just to darken it up because this the legs on this thing if they didn't have all this lacquer crackling layer they'd be light they'd be about the same color as this but I'm just going to go dark on it so that the rest of it can stay sort of au natural but uh, I'm pretty pleased with this and uh, first few times using a lathe is really exciting <coughs> but then you learn I just have these little blocks with the holes in them from test holes so I'm just going to leave it in there to dry <coughs> keeps it up off of stuff and uh, when we return we'll try uh, we'll try to start doing some of the other harder stuff I think but uh, thanks for watching catch you next time